Good morning, folks. It is Monday. Today is the last day before our Haas comes. Oh my gosh, we're excited. So take a look. We moved our main 1100 out of the way just for now uh, over there in the corner because the Haas will come through that door and hopefully sit right over here. Um, and we wanted just stuff out of the way. And I'm actually super glad. I wanna talk about Autodesk University here in a second, but my buddy, Jeff Hooper, who runs Backhand Bikes, did a presentation on moving from job shop to production machine. And he, and he talked about machine shop layout and, and, the, and the beauty of cells, having machining cells. So I wanna kinda of take that chance to rethink how we use our 1100s and our 440s and having them right next to each other so we can make you know productive use and you know jared or i or or noah can you know we can run more than one machine at a time which is going to be awesome uh, we've been setting up all of our tool holders this is a terrible place to hold tools but until our little cart comes i've been carefully putting them in here so pretty darn cool you know some regular lakeshore end mills some carbide drills some thread mills some you know nice big old well big to me you know, half inch guys for aluminum, just, I mean, beyond, beyond excited. Um, it's a little bit of a crazy week though, because so the machine left California on Friday. It will arrive, I think late today, but they couldn't really make it here by in a normal time because of the, you know, driver, legal driver limits on driver and hours. So it's coming tomorrow morning, but I really, Wanted to get the Haas service tech here on Wednesday, um, but they don't come until you confirm that it's hooked up to power and air, which I'm telling them, hey, it's right here, like I'm ready to go. Because um, Thursday's Thanksgiving, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I wanna be making chips. Otherwise they won't come till Monday, which that's gonna be a little bit of a bummer if the machine sits for six days before the Haas, they, they, you can't touch it. Like they unwrap it, they level it, they do the first turn on install, all that stuff. So yes. We will definitely be filming that uh, for sure. Speaking of the shop, Saturday, May 6th, 2017 open house. More, way more information to come. But for those, those of you that want to block the date off in your calendar, cannot wait to, to welcome you guys again to our shop here in Danesville, Ohio. Uh, but lots more to come. But Saturday, May 6th, Saturday, the May 6th, mark the date down. Today's business lesson is going to be on success. But first, I want to mention. Autodesk University, we had a great time. I didn't really understand what AU, as it's called, was until I went last year. We taught a uh, lathe class, and then this year, we did the first ever hands-on CNC machining class. It was awesome, it went really well. Unbelievable how much work you have to put into <laughs> transporting five CNC machines to a Las Vegas exhibit hall and bringing all the tools, tool holders, dial, you know, setup tools, computers, laptops, post processors, tool libraries, and we pulled it off. Big shout out to uh, Mike Brom and Brian Rep at Autodesk for all of their work that went into it. And then a big shout out to Tormach and Lakeshore Carbide for helping provide the machines, the tooling. Uh, went great. We got something like 30, 35 people who would some of the run CNC's a lot had never used it or never made parts before and they all made their own Fusion F. I actually don't even have any more. I gave them all out, but it was just, it was huge success. Thanks to John Grimsmo for filming uh, some of the footage you just saw there of us running the class. Uh, it was, it was really cool. The other thing that happened was there's these keynote speeches where important people from Autodesk and elsewhere give up and talk about changes in the industry, both in CAD as we know and care about, but Autodesk has other genres of software in the entertainment industry and the construction and building industry. Um, it's a big conference. I think there's like 10,000 people that go and you can watch it all online as well. And on the closing day keynote, I had what was, I think without doubt, the most, the proud professional moment of my life. Uh, I'll, I'll, instead of talking about it, I'll let you guys watch. So one last example I wanna use. Hi John, I know you're out there. This is someone who's changed their industry. Now, I don't know if John set out to change his industry or not, but the truth of the matter is he has. He's part of what is a growing movement of micro factories, little factories that are trying to make sure things get made closer to where they're bought. And he's not only building his own business, he's trying to inspire others to get in the game as well. Get out there with him. And here's an interesting thing about John. 
John had absolutely no background in machining and fabrication. Nothing. He was a finance guy. He went, he taught himself how to use the programs, he taught himself CNC machining, he embraced the new ways of making, and he started milling and machining in the basement of his apartment in Manhattan. Then he founded NYC CNC. Moved to the suburbs, put more equipment in his garage, kept building his business. And from 2006 on, he's had a YouTube channel where he shares his vision of things with other people and teaches them how to do what he's doing. He's not only sharing his passion with the world and building himself a bigger business, which he is, he's sharing the ideas, the tools, the knowledge that catalyze a growing network of micro factories around the world. And like I said, I'm not sure if John meant to be a change agent or a force for change, but he did it anyway. And I'm pretty sure his life will never be the same and I'm pretty sure some of the people he's engaged with have the same thing to say about themselves. I was totally taken away. I had, someone had said they wanted a picture of us. I thought it was gonna be for like a small fusion award or party, like at a separate little fusion event, not the whole Autodesk conference. And um, I got choked up. It was just, it was so flattering. It was so, uh, I, just, I, I guess maybe still a little speechless about it. Um, made me really proud, uh, made me excited to do what I love, it's sort of a validation. So that's today's business lesson I wanna to talk to you guys about, which is that no one's gonna tell you what is good, what is right, and what's going to be successful. You have to come up with that. Lots of people like to reverse analyze stuff. They look at stuff in hindsight. They say, oh, it makes sense that Facebook was successful. It makes sense that the iPad was successful. Those are two examples that I thought of because those are things that I had people I knew and respected and were close to trash them, say, no, it doesn't make sense. No, it's gonna fail. And they both change the way we work and live in this world. And I hate those examples because they're the cliched, you know, billion dollar type ideas. It doesn't have to be that way. But the takeaway is not a subtle one, which is that you have to believe in what you do and why you do it. And there's three things that really matter. One is that you need to be okay with how your business or success is, is occurring and performing. There's always going to be pressure from within and from outside to do more and to do better. So you need to stick to what you're doing and believe in so that you can say, oh, okay, yes, I want to do better. Or yes, I want to grow or yes, I want to change, but I, I am doing it and that's okay. You know, for me, uh, maybe some of you guys see, oh, we've got this YouTube channel with 130,000 subscribers, but I still feel the pressure to put out good videos and to put out the feel of pressure to make sure I'm delivering the right kind of content and that makes sense to grow our channel and so forth. And so it's, it's, you have to take a step back and look, and, and it's, sometimes it's things like this that help you remind you, yes, like we're doing it. Second thing, think long-term, and that's a great problem that people have. People want short-term results, they want short-term answers, short-term solutions, be in it for the long game. For me, I started this YouTube channel 10 years ago, and for the first four years, there was no monetization platform for YouTube. I literally did it because I was passionate about it, and it was something I enjoyed doing. That's not a recipe for everybody. That's one reason why I like bootstrapping, is it gives me the freedom to make more flexible decisions about my business without the big knowing I've got to hit every day, week, or month, you know, some big nut. But um, you have to think long term and you have to think what are the results going to be and how they're going to get me there. You got to live in the short term too in terms of again making ends meet. But thinking long term is a is the powerful way to make bigger changes. And then lastly, you've got to stick to what you want to do. Whether it's your product, whether it's your vision, whether it's your belief. There's a, a fellow of mine that runs a um, YouTube a channel about YouTube channels and he talks about how people find enjoyment in YouTube channels or other things not because of common interests like machining or Arduinos but because in common beliefs the belief that anybody can do it the belief that we can you can be a self-taught person the belief that you can be an entrepreneur the belief that you can teach yourself Arduino code and make things move that's what's awesome but you have to believe in that and again, whether you're a technology startup, whether you're doing a Kickstarter, whether you're starting a machine shop, what is your service? What are you doing? Why is it your passion? Why is it your product? You have to distill that down. So that's your homework today, folks, on this chip break. Think about what you care about, what is your passion, 
you know, John Grimsmo does a great job of making it very, very explicit. Um, I want to make, I think what he says is I want to make, I don't want to make the best knives in the world. I just want to make them better than everybody else. There's a, a catchphrase on that. And it speaks, and it maybe it's a little bit of a gutsy thing to say, but it speaks to his absolute obsession with perfection and quality. And they are phenomenal knives. And hey, he, he has some distractors. He has some people that will voice some, some uh, you know, trolls around it. And that's where you got to stick back to what you believe in and why you're doing what you do, why you love what you do. And that's what shines through, folks. I got to get ready for this Haas, folks. We will be sure to be posting and video and filming it and social media and all that. Take care. See you soon.